Verse 22, this thou hast seen. See, look, at, they say, all right, seen it. We saw it. And then, and then he goes, you know what, God, you've seen this. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silence, O Lord. Be not far from me. They're trying to bring these false witnesses saying, oh, yeah, we see, see we, we caught you. We got you. God, you saw it. You know what's going on. You know I didn't do this. Don't be silent. Lord, defend me. Help me out here. Verse 23, stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to thy righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. And I just want to point this out because we, you know, we've gone over already the point of how Matthew 5, Jesus was saying to love your enemies, and we saw it in Romans 12, and we saw it in this passage as well, right? These, these passages that talk about doing good unto people that your enemies and, and your adversaries and things like that. But how much of this psalm is not talking about good for the people who are wicked? And how much of the other psalms that we've been reading are not talking about good for the people who do wicked? And just the Bible as a whole. Okay, keep that in mind. Yes, we need to overcome evil with good. Yes, we need to be able to fight against our flesh in that way. Yes, we need to pray for people, our enemies and things like that, and people do wrong. Look, I've got some, I, I, you know, in my own personal life, there's someone that's just not just, just an enemy to me, an adversary, that for whatever reason, I don't even know why. And it's not just me, it's, it's other people too. It's not, you know, this isn't even just like a reason of my faith or something like that. There's just sometimes you have people in your life that are your enemies, right? And there's someone in my life that, that just treats me like an enemy. Lying, just whatever, all kinds of different things. But I'm not just wishing all, you know, trying to curse him and things like that. I don't. Because that's not an appropriate time or place in, in, in you know, everything considered what's going on. I'm going to do good to that person. I'm going to do right by him and I'm going to continue to try to do good even though they're my enemy, even though they may try to persecute me or whatever and, and have caused bad things to happen to me. But when you have, you know, the reprobate that's trying to like get you, you know, whatever, killed or, get, you know, trying to, to get your family destroyed or what, you know, setting those types of traps for you, I'm not going to be blessing those people. People that want to defile my children, sorry, I'm not blessing them. There's a time for a blessing and there's a time for a cursing. Just like when God got angry at Jehoshaphat for blessing those that hated the Lord. Blessing Israel, by the way, for hating the Lord. Yes, Israel. Israel. Well, I thought we were supposed to bless Israel. Well, Jehoshaphat wasn't supposed to, in the Old Testament even. Read your Bible sometime. Amen. And yes, these concepts and these truths were still applicable back then too. Loving your neighbor. That was in Leviticus. That was prior to Jehoshaphat and the kings of Israel. So the teaching is still there, but it, it's all taking appropriately. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you're not sure, because you say, well, Pastor Burns, where is that dividing? Like, like, I, I can't tell you every, you know, the exact specific. You may not always know. Err on the side of caution, just overcome evil with good. That is the overarching underlying principle anyways. I mean, you just, just do it that way and you won't go wrong. And in the clear-cut clear cases, like, dude, this guy's just rejected anyways. Well, I'm not going to pray for someone who's rejected. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be more loving than God. Because you can't be. Right. It's impossible. I'm not going to think I could be more loving than God.